Hello, David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. Well, I'm here for one of the most requested videos ever, and that is the review of the Spectre Tom Ford clothing. Now, we are actually going to be talking about two particular pieces today, two things that I've felt, quote unquote, worthy to own, if you will. But more importantly, I'm not just going to be talking about those two products. I'm going to be talking about the story of the customer experience with Tom Ford this time around. Buckle up. So let's talk about the product. I'm wearing it. Yes, this is not the combustible, supernatural, frugal bond. This is the Tom Ford Solden jacket that um, we've all seen in the movie now at this particular point. And let's talk about it for a moment. First of all, it is a takeoff, a playoff of a very traditional jacket that Montclair and many, many other brands have actually utilized over time. It's a much seen type of jacket. First of all, you've got this wonderful wool knit. And the wool itself feels beautiful. You can see it's got kind of a shadow weave to it. Um, and it continues along in the back area. So this almost feels like part sweater and part jacket. The jacket itself, this area right here, is quilted. So it's got all these quilted compartments. It's got the wonderful Tom Ford high chromed zippers you can see on both the pockets as well as the main unit. Let's take a look on the inside. The inside is very basic. No inside pockets. It's got this wonderful kind of rubberized leather um, Tom Ford emblem. It obviously has the tag, and by the way, this is a size 48. I wanted something to be fitted, but no pockets on this side. And we all thought this was black. This is navy, and this is like a charcoal gray. Now, let's talk about the fit. The fit itself, like I said, is very fitted. You can see from the side view, the arms fit pretty well, the shoulders, even the body itself. Some people out there wanted to get something a little bit bigger. Most people have downsized. So sometimes I wear a 48 or a 50. I definitely went with the 48. This is kind of how Bond does it. So you can almost imagine when it gets a little cold or you're in the snow with action scenes, you've kind of got that feeling. I have worn this jacket many times out in the real world, and I love it. It's comfortable. It moves really well. I don't feel paranoid. I'm going to snag on it. It's a great jacket. Um, comfortable. Unfortunately, it was kind of smashed and packed in a box. But there's some controversy of whether you can put this on a hanger. You want to lay it flat because it is like a sweater, but it is beautiful. Um, do I think it's worth the price? I actually do. Um, it comes with a pretty penny, which I'll go over in a second, but real, real big fan of this particular jacket. Now, I will say there are some differences in this jacket versus the screen used jacket. So the screen accurate jacket had uh, for example, more of these type of quiltings. The zipper was a little bit long. It did have some changes even around the zipper. So it wasn't dead on to what they did in the movie. If that doesn't bother you, then I highly, highly recommend this particular piece. But let's take a look at another piece, shall we? Well, just like magic, I am in the Tangiers Morocco outfit. No, you did not just dial into the Matchless Review. That's a Another video, but um, this is the outfit. So, I mean, obviously, I've got my J. Crew shoes on. These are not the Brunello pants, uh, but this is obviously the matchless jacket. Let's take it off so you can see the second piece of Tom Ford kit that I actually have. And this is the polo. Now, if you remember, the polo was much discussed before we even knew what color it was. We knew that there were three colors it was a light blue, there was a silver, and there was obviously this navy color. But let's talk about the shirt itself. So the shirt, as you can see, hits very high on the bicep. I always talk about where these things hit. Some hit here. Uh, the really bad ones hit here. Um, this hits pretty high on the bicep. And I don't know how detailed you can get, but the stitching itself is unbelievable. I mean, there's so much detail in here. Um, it's not peak. It's not um, or pique. Um, and it's not smooth for sure. But you can see some of the details like on the back um, are really absolutely amazing. And I love that aspect of it. When I first saw the price, I kind of gagged a little bit. But um, then seeing the details, obviously I was very happy. Now, 
this is a very deep V. <laughs> this is not for the faint of heart. In fact, what I found myself doing when I first wore this is to keep pulling it up. But it does kind of sink down. But if you look in the movie, it does that on Bond as well. What really makes this interesting, besides no buttons up here, is this right here, what's called a bandit bottom. This is very 1950s, 1960s type of look. As a matter of fact, in the movie, when Bond kind of raises his hands, you can actually see the, um, the weaved belt underneath that. So the banded bottom does tend to kind of move with you a little bit. I like the style. I think it's, it's very flattering. You can see that the shirt itself has a very nice silhouette. Um, the back itself moves with you very well, but it's also very flattering. I wound up taking a 48, um, which is about a 38 in U.S. size. And the reason I did that is because I wanted the, the look that Bond had in the movie, which was very fitted. Um, that being said, I was also nervous that this type of knitting, this type of fabric, would stretch out over time. I chose correctly, because I actually tried on a 50 at the Tom Ford store, and the 50 was just too big. It was a little billowy here. It just didn't have that kind of fitted look that looks really good under the matchless jacket. What's my verdict on this? I love it. Um, now, here we go for the faint of heart. It's over $900. It's a $900 polo. Let me just put that in perspective. I reviewed an Olibar Brown $100 t-shirt that made people's jaws drop. This is a $900 polo. It is what it is. It's bond piece of kit, not for the weak of heart. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Okay, so stay with me. I promised you a story of Tom Ford around the experience. Now, obviously, these two pieces, uh, the sunglasses that I'll be reviewing on another video, I really like. I do really, really like the product. I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. The reality is, is this customer experience with Tom Ford was not up to snuff. It was not up to par with what I've talked about in the other videos, and it's really, quite frankly, disturbing. So many months ago, when we found out that Tom Ford was back, uh, we were in contact with our good friends over at the Tom Ford New York City store and some salespeople in general that we built a relationship with. Not Mario Lopez. We miss those days of Mario Lopez, but some other new people. And sure enough, when the lookbook that lovely black and white book that comes out that customers can look at the different range came out around Spectre, it was shared with me. And I, in turn, because I'm very loyal to brands that I support, I think you know that already, shared it to the world. I shared it online, I shared it on my own webpage, and people, in turn, shared it. And there was an explosion. Now, it was all done very innocently, quite frankly, but the sales individuals that shared it with us got into a little bit of a trouble. Now, there's so much speculation of why. You know, there's definitely some assumptions that Tom Ford's marketing focus and marketing group wanted to release it themselves, and who was I? Some little vlogger out there with a decent subscription and viewership putting it out there, and it caused a stir. It caused more orders and more calls around the world around these Spectre things than you would ever believe. To the point where they said, slow down, we want to do our own marketing. And Tom Ford's group asked me to remove all those things. And I spent a good three days calling around, emailing around to the other websites that released this stuff to say, take it down, let's play ball. Well, that was the first little bump in the road. The second one was once we put our orders in. Now, we were given prices. Obviously, we put our credit cards down. Um, and for this particular piece, we were given a particular price of $1,650. Not unusually expensive for Tom Ford, but still, that's what we were given. For this particular piece, we were also given a price. Once the actual prices came out, now mind you, we had already signed a credit card for this, lo and behold, the prices had gone up. Strangely enough, the prices had gone up on just the jacket and just the polo. Hmm. Supply, demand, I don't know. But the reality is, this went up to $22 to $2,400. Now, what made me very upset about this whole thing, quite frankly, was we were promised a certain price. We dropped our credit cards, and now all of a sudden the prices were going up. What the heck has happened? So I tried to get in touch with Tom Ford, 
they wouldn't make any allowances whatsoever. We were paying that higher price. I wound up actually ordering these particular pieces from the London store, from Dario, who's been absolutely amazing in now re-elevating the customer service of Tom Ford. So here's where I'm going with this. I am not here to absolutely obliterate and napalm a brand, the brand Tom Ford, in this video. What I am here to have all of you realize is there's many different levels of any corporation. So you've got the brand and you've got the corporation. So at a mid-level, mid to low level, and I'm not besmirching these people, you've got the salespeople who are, would do anything. They are amazing with the customer experience. They try to build a relationship. They try to elevate. Then you've got the very, very top level. That's Tom Ford. The man is extremely charming, and I think he's very authentic, and I think he has some very authentic moments, and I believe he has a vision to create an experience. And then you have upper middle management, and this is any type of corporation. But I believe a lot of these issues that we faced with these pricing, the, the marketing, and even some other blurbs here and there, have to do with a different layer of the company. So I'm not going to blanket the entire Tom Ford company and say Tom Ford is bad in general, but I'm going to slow down. I am not going to go out there, and I was a person that would buy Tom Ford things outside of Bonn. I will not be doing that. I will not be wandering into their boutiques and shops and trying on things. I've got my Spectre kit. I limited it. I had a lot more that I was going to order, and this is going to be it. Uh, it's going to be a moment, because the experience is everything to me. So let me give you this final asterisk on all this. As I came back from London, um, had all my Tom Ford kit, I received another call from Tom Ford. This was the Los Angeles branch. And they had said, listen, you know, you, you've been dedicated, you've been very loyal. We'd like to give you two tickets to a uh, premiere, a Tom Ford Spectre premiere in London. And I'm like, wow, you know, that's, that's great. I, I'd love to do that. Great, somebody will be in touch from the New York store. I waited, I waited, so I emailed back, hey, didn't hear anything about the tickets, only a couple days to this proposed thing. They got back to me and said, oh yeah, sorry, we couldn't send you tickets because they gave all of them to the Estee Lauder targets and customers. Guys, I'm begging you, Tom Ford and gang, stop over-promising and under-delivering. You were the opposite not too long ago. You delivered in spades on the experience. Your products were second to none. I didn't mind spending that money, and so did other people. And you built a relationship, and now you are tearing it down. Stop. Take a moment. Re-energize yourself. Come back from this. Please do not have the attitude that you can lose customers left and right because there's plenty out there, because your 15 minutes of fame of all the celebrities using Tom Ford is almost up. And then you're going to rely on the customers that you've bent on for all these years. I hope and pray they do that. I think the brand can rejuvenate itself. I think any brand can. It's really up to them, not you, the viewer. So anyway, this has been David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you very soon. Take care.